How's it going everybody, Lampini here. Today we are going to be reviewing week seven of the 2024 NFL season. Now, from last week, to put it mildly, I did extremely well with my predictions. So we're just gonna get right into it. If you take a look here, I was 15 and one. I got one game wrong last week. Um, I thought the Broncos were gonna beat the Chargers. Turns out they're kind of frauds and the Chargers were ended up beating them. So I was 15 and one, I got everything right. But to be fair, a lot of these were like, favorites that were expected to win. There weren't a lot of upsets, so not really surprised, but that puts my overall record for the season to 61 and 32. So I have called almost twice as many games right that I have wrong. So I say it every week, watch my videos, if your sports better, you'll get your picks from me, you'll make money off me, watch my videos. So it's just that easy. But without further ado, let's kick it off with Thursday Night Football. So, the Thursday night football game, we have the Denver Broncos at the New Orleans Saints. The Saints have dropped four straight games since their 2-0 start, which is pretty damn embarrassing considering how well they did. As for the Denver Broncos, they lost out to the um, LA Chargers 23-16. Now, that does seem like a pretty close game, but then you realize that the Broncos scored all 16 of their points in the fourth quarter. Bo Nix was 19 of 33 for 216 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception for an 84.9 passer rating. He, I mean, like, he didn't do much except for the fourth quarter. So you could argue that that was a lot of garbage time. They still lost by eight points, four or five, sorry, they lost by seven points. So they were still possession down. Um, the Chargers have done very well. The Broncos had won three straight, and now I think they're coming down to earth just a little bit. Same goes for the Saints. Um, they did not have Derek Carr this season, um, this game. They scored all 27 of their points in the second quarter. They took advantage of some of Baker Mayfield's interceptions, um, which he threw three. We'll get over that when we go over Tampa Bay. Uh, Spencer Rattler got the start instead of Derek Carr. He was 22 of 40 for 243 yards, touchdown, two interceptions, and a 60.7 passer rating. So not too bad um, for a first game. He was sacked five times though, but I mean, it showed. It was his first career start, and it showed. I think Spencer, Spencer Rattler is going to be the future for that team. Derek Carr's num um, days are numbered. If he keeps doing bad and the Saints keep sliding like they have, then I think they're going to put in Spencer Rattler and see what they have. Um, this is a very interesting game because both of these teams are, are kind of falling. I think the Saints are falling harder. If Derek Carr doesn't play, I think the Denver Broncos have a very underrated defense, and they're going to be able to hold the Saints to a certain level of points. And I think that... Um, the Broncos are going to win this game, improve to 4-3. Um, they're not a very good team, but I do think they're going to be a worse team in the New Orleans Saints. So next up, we have the New England Patriots at the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is an NFL Network game in London, and nothing better than a good old-fashioned tank bowl in London. Um, both teams are 1-5. These are two bottom-of-the-pack teams in the NFL right now. Um, the biggest point of interest here is that um, Drake May got his first start for New England in this game. And um, I don't really understand the decision throwing him in against Houston, of all teams. 4-1 uh, and one Houston Texans, I don't really understand that. But he was 20-33, 243 yards, 3 touchdowns, 2 interceptions, 88.3 passer rating. So he played all right. I mean, they, they were down from the very beginning because Houston scored 14 points in the first quarter. Um, and then you know, they, they, were, they were playing from behind the entire game. But um, I guess he did admirably. Um, this is going to be a major retooling year again for the Patriots. Mac Jones didn't work out, so now they're going to give Drake May a shot. Um, as for the Jaguars, they got beat pretty bad in London. I think they played in London last week, too. It's interesting. Well, the Chicago Bears thrashed them 35-16. But Trevor Lawrence had a decent game, 23 of 35, 234 yards, two touchdowns, an interception for a 91.8 passer rating. Um, all these people saying that Trevor Lawrence is going to be a bust or that he's not living up to expectations. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that he's just on not a good, not a very good team. Um, the only thing Trevor Lawrence had going for him was the second half of the 2022 season where they went on that run. They won that playoff game. Um, he came back against the Chargers, but let's not forget, he threw four interceptions to get himself into that situation. But, I mean, very interesting. I think that... Trevor Lawrence being a part of the Jaguars, the Patriots aren't going to be able to score as much. I think the Jaguars are going to win this game. It's literally just who is worse out of the two. Um, and in this point, it's going to be the Jaguars. So I'm going with the Jaguars. So next up, we have the Seattle Seahawks at the Atlanta Falcons. 
Um, the, the Seahawks um, are coming off of a bad performance against the 49ers where they lost 36-24. They've lost three straight. They were 3-0 at one point, and now they're really starting to come down to earth. I always thought they were a pretty mid-team to begin with, so they're showing that here. As for the Falcons, they beat the Panthers pretty convincingly, 38-20. Um, Kirk Cousins with another pretty good game. He was 19-30 of 30 for 225 yards and a touchdown, a 97.2 passer rating. Um, the Falcons got all their work done on the ground, though. Uh, both of their running backs had career years. Tyler Algier had 18 carries for 105 yards and a touchdown. He averaged 5.8 yards a carry. And then Bijan Robinson finally finding his way on the, um, the review channel. 15 carries for 95 yards, two touchdowns. He averaged 6.3 yards a carry. So a pretty good performance by the Atlanta Falcons offense. They are now 4-2. and two. So they are making a run for the wild card. I'd say that um, the Buccaneers, I think, have that division locked up. Well, I maybe not locked up, actually, because um, the Falcons did a very good job beating Tampa last week. Um, so the Falcons could very well make a run and potentially don't backdoor themselves into the playoffs here. Um, Kirk Cousins, is um, he's starting to get his footing a little bit. He had a, a slow start to the season, but I think he's really starting to like set in now. Um, he may be 36. He may be one of the older quarterbacks in the league, but he can still get it done. Um, in this game, I think the Seahawks are going to drop their fourth straight. It is at home. It's in Atlanta. Um, the Falcons are playing some really good football. Their defense is playing well. Their offense is operating on all cylinders. I think the Falcons are going to win this game. Okay, so next up, we have the Tennessee Titans at the Buffalo Bills. Um, the Titans are coming off a loss against the Indianapolis Colts. Um, and, like, it, it's, it's the same story that it's ever been with the Titans this year. They are... A bottom five team. Will Levis is not their future. They have nothing going for them. They are like, this is the kind of year that Washington had where the Titans just need to bottom out. They need a top three draft pick. They need to get somebody. And it sucks because this quarterback class is kind of weak. Um, so I don't know if you do get someone or if you run with Will Levis, but the Titans are in, are in the worst kind of purgatory. They are not going anywhere this year. As for the Bills, um, as of the time I'm recording this, they played the Jets yesterday on Monday Night Football. They won 23-20 to off of a game-losing interception by Aaron Rodgers. Um, Josh Allen was 19-25 of for 215 yards and two touchdowns, 127.9 passer rating. Um, Josh Allen is quietly making his mark as potential MVP. He has not thrown a single interception this entire season. If he doesn't win an MVP for doing that, he most definitely is going to win Offensive Player of the Year. Or that might go to Derrick Henry, actually. We'll wait and see, but Josh Allen is having a very, very good year. And um, right now, the Bills are 4-2. and two. Um, They are in control of that division. I think the only team that's really going to give them problems are the New York Jets. The, the, the division is very weak because the Dolphins are in shambles because Tua, Tua is still a concussion machine, and the Patriots are in rebuild mode, and the Jets are going all in and failing miserably. So I'm going with the Bills on this one. This should be a pretty easy win for them. So next up, we have the Cincinnati Bengals at the Cleveland Browns. This is a huge rivalry game. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Paul Brown founded the Browns. And then when he left the Cleveland Browns, he founded the Cincinnati Bengals. So, you know, some cool facts there. Um, the Bengals are coming off of a win. They are now 2-4. and four. So um, they're really trying to dig themselves out of a really bad hole. Everyone's saying that they're a one in four team, but they don't play like one. That's true, but they have a really bad defense, which is what's really, really hurting them right now. Um, as for the Browns, they're another really bad team. Deshaun Watson is Deshaun Watson. Um, they lost to the Eagles 20 to 16, um, which is not good for the Eagles. We'll talk about that a little bit later when we, when we, when we talk about the Eagles, but um, the, the Browns are not, they're not anything right now. They are one in five. They are one of the worst teams in the league, like they always are. Deshaun Watson had a pretty average game for his standards. He was 16 of 23 for 168 yards and 90.5 passer rating. So didn't throw any touchdowns, didn't throw any picks, and his completion percentage was okay. But, I mean, uh, what, what else is there to be said, right, about this Deshaun Watson thing? He needs to go. But, like, they have so much invested in him that they are going to, they're going to die on this hill, you know, with all this guaranteed money. He, I think his shoulder surgery is underselling a lot, but something else I've noticed, and what I, I don't know if I really said this in last week when I was talking about when the Browns played the Commanders, but the problem with Deshaun Watson is not only does he not physically look like he's there, he looks unprepared, too. He looks like he does not 
study the film as much as he used to. He doesn't look like he prepares as much as he used to, like a, how a professional quarterback is supposed to. And frankly, why should he? It's a guaranteed contract. He knows he's not getting benched. He's just going out there and playing, and it's destroying the morale of the Cleveland Browns. Um, it's a divisional game, so it might be closer than some people might expect, but I do think the Bengals are still going to win. Um, if they manage to get back up to 4-4, four and four, then it's like, okay, they're, they're kind of digging themselves back out of this hole, and we might see them make a run for the playoffs because Joe Burrow is playing out of his mind right now. He's playing very, very good football, so I'm going with the Bengals. So next up, we have the Houston Texans at the Green Bay Packers. Uh, both these teams are coming off of pretty, pretty impressive wins. The Texans beat the Patriots 41-21, and then the Packers beat the, the Cardinals 34-13. So two very impressive showings by both teams. Um, just going to rifle off some stats just so you guys see who was really the big players here. C.J. Stroud was 20 of 31 for 192 yards, three touchdowns, one interception, a 100.5 passer rating, probably his best game of the season. Joe Mixon had 13 carries for 102 yards and a touchdown, averaged 7.8 yards a carry, um, one of his best games of the season. Um, going over to the Packers side, uh, Jordan Love was 22 of 32 for 258 yards, four touchdowns, one interception, 119.5 passer rating. And then a um, couple of touchdowns from a pair of receivers. Christian Watson, three receptions, 68 yards, and a touchdown. And then Romeo Dobbs had three receptions for 49 yards and two touchdowns. So as you can see by those stats, these two teams balled out last week. They did incredibly well. Both offenses were operating on all cylinders. The Packers are 4-2. and two, The Texans are 5-1. and one. And the NFC North is incredible. The Bears, Lions, the Bears, Lions, and Packers are all 4-2. and two. And the, Vi the Vikings are still 5-0. That division is anyone's grasp right now. And what's crazy is, I'm trying to think about what other NFC teams could make a run for the wild card right now. Because as it stands right now, that whole division could get in. Which I think is insane. Um, but, yeah, so who's going to win in this game? This is going to be a really, really good game. Uh, a lot of offensive firepower. I think the like the, these two teams were very similar last year, too, because... They both made the playoffs, and they both won a playoff game. Um, and they almost made the conference championship. So th these two teams are in very similar situations right now in their, not necessarily their rebuild, but where they are in terms of the, in terms of the league, you know. Um, but I I am going to go, mm, it's hard to play in Lambeau. Um, I'm going to go with the Texans on this one. I think that... They are just a slightly more complete team. However, if I was going to get any of these picks wrong, I would get this one wrong because this is a dark horse Super Bowl showing right now, I think, between these two teams. I like. The, I Don't be surprised if these two, either one of them or both of them, make the Super Bowl. It'd be really cool if the Texans made it. They've never been to a Super Bowl or a conference championship, for that matter. So I think that would be really cool. But for right now, I'm going with the Houston Texans. Um, next up, we have the Miami Dolphins at the Indianapolis Colts. Um... I mean, I, there, there's not much to say about either of these teams as well. The, the Dolphins were on a bye um, last week. So the week prior, they beat the Patriots 15-10. to 10. Um, Tyler Huntley is currently their starting quarterback. Um, not even going to dignify him with going over his stats. Um, the Colts are coming off a win over the Titans. That's a win that they should be getting. Um, Joe Flacco with 22 of 38, 189 yards, two touchdowns, and interception, a 77.6 passer rating. Um... The carousel of quarterbacks continue for the Indianapolis Colts. Since since Andrew Luck retired, we had Jacoby Brissett, then we had Phillip Rivers, then we had Carson Wentz, then we had Matt Ryan. We, they tried it with Anthony Anthony Richardson. He got injured, so Gardner Minshew came in. They tried Anthony Richardson again this year. It didn't work, and now they have Joe Flacco. So the Colts are a very unstable franchise right now, and like they are going to beat the Dolphins. They're going to beat the Dolphins, and they are going to rise up to four and three but they're not a very good team you know so they're going to get this win they're going to go to four and three but they're a very weak four and three and i don't really think they're going to make a lot of noise in the playoffs they're really benefiting from a weak schedule and a weak division they have the opportunity to get four easy wins against the titans and jaguars right um but i think with that being said i think that's going to be about it um i'm going with the colts on that one and then next up we have the detroit lions at the minnesota vikings now, this is going to be a very good game. 
Uh, the Lions are 4-1, and one, the Vikings are 5-0. and oh. Vikings are the, well, the Chiefs are undefeated too. The Vikings, I think, are still a the default number one in terms of the power rankings. Um, they've looked very, very good. They beat the Jets um, a week prior because they were on a bye week last week. 23-17. Um, Sam Darnold had his first poor game as a starting quarterback, though. He was 14 of 31 for 179 yards and an interception for a 50.3 passer rating. The good news is he now had that extra bye week to recuperate. So we'll see if he can kind of come back swinging and be ready to like um, come back and be back to where he was, you know, for the first couple weeks of the NFL season. As for the Lions, they did a straight up beat down against the Dallas Cowboys, 47 to 9. Um, Jared Goff was 18 of 25 for 315 yards, three touchdowns, 153.8 passer rating. Career year, career game for Jared Goff there. And then David Montgomery had 80 yards off of 12 carries for two rushing touchdowns. Um, the Lions, like I, and I say this every week, like the Lions look like a very good team. When they lose, they go until the very end, but they are one of the stronger teams in the NFL right now. And I think that um, when you see the power rankings, they've moved up into the top five um but God, against the undefeated vikings i don't know the lions are coming in with a lot of momentum so okay this is going to be my big upset game the lions are coming in with a lot of momentum the vikings are coming off of a bye week but i'm going to go with the lions on this one i think the lions are going to be the ones that dealt the vikings their first loss if the lions are the ones that do it if they beat the undefeated vikings that's going to be a big feather in the cap of the detroit lions and I think they're going to be taken a lot more seriously. They're going to be regarded as one of the stronger teams in the NFL. I am going with the Lions on this one. So this next game may be a bit innocuous, but I think it's an incredibly important game this week. We have the Philadelphia Eagles at the New York Giants. So why is this a very interesting game? The Eagles have not looked good. I think a lot of they're, they're riding the reputation of the 2022 uh, Super Bowl run that they had where they were just killing everyone. They looked incredibly strong. They went straight. They were Super Bowl or bust. They went straight to the Super Bowl, and they came up just short against the Chiefs. But they looked very, very good. And I think that last year, the slide that they had was a big one. And I said this in week one. If the Eagles continue the slide that they were on, Nick Sirianni is going to be gone. They need a new head coach. The Eagles are going to be in some trouble. Um... They barely got by the Cleveland Browns, 20 to 16. Um, like you saw what the Commanders did to the Browns. The Eagles cannot just simply squeak by with a win like that. Um, Jalen Hurts had a good game, though. He was 16 of 25, 264 yards, two touchdowns, 126.1 passer rating. And I tell you what, tell you who else was back. AJ Brown was back. Six receptions, 116 yards, and a touchdown. That's very impressive as well. Um, so a good showing by the offense, but. Just squeaking by with a four-point win against the Browns is not going to do it. Um, a divisional matchup like this, the Eagles cannot drop a game to the Giants right now. That would be very, very embarrassing for them. Um, the Giants lost to the Bengals 17-7. to Daniel Jones was 22 of 41 for 205 yards, a interception, and a 57.5 passer rating. And not only was it an interception, it was a really, really bad interception too. Um, so... Um, I'm going to cut to the chase. I do think the Eagles are going to win. I was saying a similar thing with the Eagles and the Browns, that if the Eagles drop this game, I think Nick Sirianni is playing for his job right now, coaching for his job right now. If he loses this game against the Giants, then Nick Sirianni is going to be fired. Um, the NFC is incredibly competitive. You saw how the NFC, South, NFC North is. Every team has four or more wins. And right now, the Commanders, that division is theirs to lose. So the Eagles really need to do something to keep themselves occupied and keep going because um, it says here they're three and two right now. They are gonna need they're gonna need this win, but I think they're gonna get it. So next up we have the Las Vegas Raiders at the uh, Los Angeles Rams. Um, the Raiders were beaten pretty badly by the Steelers, 32-13, and then the Rams are coming off of a bye um, where they lost to the Packers, 24-19. So the Rams are one and four. Um, they have been extremely injury riddled this entire season. Um, Matt Stafford had a decent game, 29 of 45, 260 yards, a touchdown and interception, 78 passer rating. 
And then Kyron Williams had a pretty good game, 22 carries for 102 yards and a touchdown. So, I mean, their offense will put up points every now and then. Um, I do think they are going to beat the Raiders here. I think the Raiders are a – they're a lot worse than their record says. I think that win against the that win against the Ravens was a bit of a fluke. Um, they're bringing in Aiden O'Connell once again to play. If your choices between quarterback are Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell, you're not going to go anywhere, right? It's just you're not you're not going anywhere. Um, so this is a retooling year for the Raiders. They really need to bottom out. They cannot afford to have another eight and nine eight and nine season like they did last time, um, and not get a good enough draft pick. They're in media, they're they're sitting in mediocrity hell right now. Not the best thing in the world. They need to do something about it. But I am going to go with the Rams on this one. I think they're going to win. So that was the first 4 p.m. game. Uh, this one is 425, and this is going to be another interesting game. We have a Super Bowl rematch between the Kansas City Chiefs, 5-0, at the San Francisco 49ers, 3-3. Three three. Uh, so the Chiefs are coming off a of bye as well. They're one of two undefeated teams. And um, they beat the Saints 26-13. Uh, with that being said, Patrick Mahomes, once again, did not have a very good game. He was 28 of 39 for 331 yards and an interception for an 86.6 passer rating. Right now, Mahomes has scored six touchdowns and thrown six interceptions. He is still the DraftKings frontrunner for MVP, so that means people are betting that he's going to come back and return to form. Um, coming back off of a bye week is the best way to do it. So I think that is um, what people are expecting in San Francisco? I don't know. We'll wait and see. Um, Kareem Hunt had a very good game. 27 carries for 102 yards and a touchdown. And then Juju Smith-Schuster had one of his best games that he's had in a while. Seven receptions for 130 yards. When you really think about it, the Chiefs offense is not that talented. You have Kareem Hunt at running back and you have Juju Smith-Schuster as your wide receiver one right now. Xavier Worthy has proven to kind of just be more of a gadget player. And you obviously still have Travis Kelsey, but he hasn't been able to get much done either. So right now, the Chiefs are operating with a very average average offense. But Mahomes is doing enough to get by, and they are still 5-0. It's looking a lot like how they were last year, 2023, where they had like 13 wins, and they did well, but they weren't dominant in the regular season. However, they were dominant in the playoffs, which was, which was, which was a very, very interesting turn of events. We've never really seen a team that can do that. Um, but... The 49ers are coming off a good game, too. Brock Purdy had a great game. 18 of 28, 255 yards, three touchdowns, a 129.3 passer rating. So he had a very good game against the Seahawks. And he is making a very strong case for another Pro Bowl season. Um, I don't think it's going to be enough to defeat the Chiefs, though. I think the Chiefs are coming off of a bye. And I think if any team is going to right the ship and turn back into the dominant team that they were um, after a bye, it's going to be the Chiefs. I think they're going to beat the 49ers, and I think the 49ers are going to fall to 4-3. and three. Yeah, very interesting there, huh? All right, so we've been waiting this whole time to say it. This next game, we have the Carolina Panthers at the Washington Commanders. Um, I'm just going to talk about the Panthers really quick before I can start talking about my team. Um, they lost 38-20, to 20, really bad fashion against the Atlanta Falcons. Andy Dalton threw two interceptions, and uh, not much to say about that. He is, you know, I, I like the the the... Lynn's sanity run is over for him. Um, right now, they might as well put Bryce Young back in and see how he does because, I mean, Andy Dalton had his first couple good games. But, you know, once the weeks start turning into week, week after week, it's hard to recover each week. Um, so NFL teams have film of you. They find your weaknesses. They take advantage. That's usually how it goes, right? They don't, they don't really... You don't stay hot for very long, and that's what's happening with the Panthers. Okay, enough of that. Now we're going to talk about the Washington Commanders. So, with this game, um, I thought they did pretty well. Um, they they weren't blown out, which is all I was hoping for, and I was right that the Ravens did win. Uh, their offense looked pretty good. Um, they, we just couldn't get stops on defense. Our defense is still the suspect part of our game. Um, we came in... We came in into the second half, and we needed to score a touchdown um, going into the second half. We only settled for a field goal. We were able to score a touchdown in the fourth quarter on fourth and goal, which was pretty impressive. Um, but the Ravens were just too much for us. We ended up losing 23-30. Um, I think the Ravens are just uh, complete. They are so good. When, with the, the Derrick Henry, the Derrick Henry-Lamar Jackson combo is just deadly. I think it's the best in the entire league. Um, but... 
our offense still looked really good. Jaden Daniels still had a very good game. He was 24-35, 269 yards, two touchdowns, 110.3 passer rating. So a good game by Jaden Daniels. Terry McLaurin did well. He scored two touchdowns as well. Um, but I think the Commanders are going to win. They need to win this game. They have a pretty soft schedule coming up. Uh, they play like the Giants, they play the Eagles, they play the Bears, and then they play the Panthers. So it's a pretty easy schedule. I see no reason why they can't be 7-2, and 8-2 and two in these coming games because we have a very easy schedule. Um, the division is ours to lose. Um, right now I'm going with Washington. I thought the game went pretty well. We, we stayed in the game. We didn't commit any turnovers. We didn't play sloppy football. Um, so I was impressed with that, and I think the team knows that. I think that they know that. There's a lot to improve on, but I was I was satisfied with their performance. They showed me that they're a playoff team, but I don't know if they're a Super Bowl team yet because the Ravens are a Super Bowl team, but I learned that the Commanders are at least a playoff team. So I'm going with the Commanders on this one. So now we come to the Sunday night game. We have the New York Jets once again in prime time. We have the New York Jets at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, the Steelers are at 4-2. and two. The Jets are coming off a pretty bad loss against the Buffalo Bills. They were keeping it close for the longest time. Aaron Rodgers was having a pretty good game. He threw a costly interception in the fourth quarter that just about cost them the game. Aaron Rodgers was 23 of 35 for 294 yards, two touchdowns, an interception, and a 99 passer rating. He was six yards away from that elusive 300-yard mark that he's been so um, afraid of hitting. So um, there was that. Brees Hall had his best game of the season, 18 carries for 113 yards. Um, good showing there. Um, they just fell up short, came up short against the Bills. That interception was what, what was what cost them. I mean, the Jets are like it, it, like again. It's another thing where it's like, what can be said about them? Like, it's such a shame that they were going for this all-in Super Bowl push with this great defense. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's coaching. I don't know if it's that they're like um, smaller level coaching, like the receivers coaches, the quarterbacks coach. If there's too much, if there's too much. Um, drama if there's too many cooks in the kitchen i don't know what it is about the jets but they are doomed to just not be a successful team uh a team that is destined to be successful is the steelers they dropped two games but they came back with a good win here against the raiders Najee harris had his first 100 yard game of the season 14 carries 106 yards and a touchdown and then um, justin fields ran for two touchdowns as well um, Justin Field has really proven to be like he's their guy right now. Um, even when Russell Wilson is healthy, I wouldn't put him in. I think the Steelers are going to end with 10 or 11 wins like they usually do. If they win a playoff game, then that's going to be considered a victory for them. But right now, um, they're in the wild card race right now for the AFC. And I think that they're going to make short work of the New York Jets and improve to 5-2. and two. So now we come to our very last game. It's Monday night, and boy, is it a doozy. We have the Baltimore Ravens at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, both these teams are coming off of wins. Uh, the Buccaneers are 4-2 and two right now, and they are tied with the Atlanta Falcons for that division. But I think right now, God, they're so... But like when you think about it, like the Bucs are 4-2. and two, The Falcons are 4-2. and two, The Bears and Packers are 4-2. and two, The Lions are 4-1. and one. Like the NFC is incredibly competitive this year. That, is, that right there are four, five teams... And, and then four of them, four if you're counting, like, the non-division leaders. So one of those teams is going to be left out in the shuffle. Is it going to be the Buccaneers? I don't really know. They've looked very, very impressive this year. And they put up 51 points against the Saints. Baker Mayfield was 24 of 36 for 325 yards, four touchdowns, three interceptions for a 97.6 passer rating. So he threw three interceptions, but he came back by throwing four touchdowns. So I guess you really can't complain there. And Chris Godwin had a fantastic game, one of his best games ever. Um, 11 receptions, 125 yards, and two touchdowns. Very impressive showing. Another impressive showing was by the Baltimore Ravens. Mr. Derrick Henry does it again. 24 carries for 132 yards and two touchdowns. This man, Derrick Henry, is on pace for 2,000 rushing yards and 20 touchdowns. That, like, if he doesn't win MVP doing that, if he doesn't win MVP... Getting his second 2,000-yard rushing season, the first player to ever do it, with 20 rushing touchdowns, and he doesn't win MVP, then I'm done with this league. Like, no one else deserves that. Like, I think Derrick Henry is a bigger asset to this offense than Lamar. Well, I'd say they're equal. They are as equal importance on, on this offense. Lamar is important, but Derrick Henry is just as important. Um, when I saw that the Ravens got Derrick Henry, 
I realized that that one-two punch was going to be the best in the league, and it most certainly has been. It's been like, they have the number one offense in the league right now, and it's without surprise. You have the reigning MVP, and you have the best running back in the league. May, arguably, arguably the best offensive player in the league right now that's not a quarterback. Like, they are just, it boggles the mind. It boggles the mind. Um, but they took care of business against Washington. They had a bad interception. Not a bad interception, but like in the red zone in the first quarter, they had a chance to score and get off early. Bobbled out of the hands, and um, our rookie Mike, Mike Siren still, I don't know how to say his last name, he picked off his first interception. But other than that, Lamar Jackson did pretty good. He was 20 of 26 for 323 yards, a touchdown, and an interception, 114.7 passer rating. So he got 300 passing yards off of only 20 completions, which is pretty impressive. But yeah, so oh, this is going to be such a tough game to call. I do think the Ravens are going to win. And the reason why I say that is because nobody's been able to contain Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson these last couple games. We were able to do it early on in the game, but the problem is Derrick Henry gets stronger throughout the game which means that just like when the third and fourth quarter rolls around, he gets his carries and he gets his yards and there's not much the other team can do. They wear him down. And until until I see otherwise, the Ravens are going to keep doing what they're doing. It's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a high-scoring game, but I do think the Ravens are going to win. So last but not least, we have the Los Angeles Chargers at the Arizona Cardinals. Um, the Chargers are quietly, they're quietly three and two. We would have thought that Jim Harbaugh would get a little bit more out of his team, but they've just kind of quietly done done well. Um, maybe they'll get a wild card spot. They're not going to threaten the Chiefs or anything like that, you know. Uh, Justin Herbert was twenty one of thirty fourth, two hundred thirty seven yards, a touchdown, ninety two point four passer rating. It seems like every time I go over Justin Herbert, he's like doing all right, but he's not thirty eight passing touchdowns like he did in his second year as a starter. So he's doing all right. And then J.K. Dobbins, 25 carries, 96 yards for a touchdown. He is really doing a good job establishing himself as the starting running back for the Chargers. He was injured all the time for the Ravens, but he's a good player, and it's showing in, in, his, um, in his play with the Chargers. I'm going to be brief with this one. Everyone always says the Cardinals are a rebuilding team. The Cardinals are a rebuilding team. The Cardinals are a rebuilding team. But until I see something that shows some kind of promise, this is a failed rebuild. They might need to get rid of Kyler Murray. They might need to get something on defense. Right now, they're in mediocrity hell. Like, I haven't seen too much of an improvement from them. And I'm not, Jonathan Gannon may be a good head coach, but they don't have a lot going for them. And they think they, they need something big to happen or else they're going to be stuck in mediocrity hell like the Raiders, like the Raiders, or like what's another, who's another team in mediocrity hell? Let me see here. I mean, I, you could argue the Jets are in mediocrity hell. You could argue that the Colts are in mediocrity hell. Um, the Seahawks are in mediocrity hell. A lot of these teams are just mediocre and they need that one big kick to get themselves over the top. And the Cardinals are not going to do that anytime soon. I'm going with the Chargers. I think they're going to win. So that concludes the predictions. Now we go into the post show where we go over the point differentials and then we go over uh, the power rankings of my top five. So without further ado, let's get into the point differentials. Okay, so here we go with the point differentials. We're going to start with the AFC. Boom. So um, right now, the top three teams right now are the Buffalo Bills, Pittsburgh Steelers, and Kansas City Chiefs with 39, 38, and 33 points up, respectively. And then the Ravens coming around the rear with positive 28. Um, Raiders, Patriots, and Jaguars are at the bottom. Again, no real surprise there. Um, then you got certain teams like the Houston Texans that are 5-1, and one, but they only have a positive 8-point differential. That's why point differentials can be a little bit deceptive sometimes, and I think the Texans' one loss was a blowout. Um, so um, very hard to, to decide these things based on just – point differentials, but I do think it's important to take into consideration as well. Um, if we go into the NFC, you'll see that it's a lot different, right? The Vikings are still number one with a positive 63 point differential coming up the rear. Wow. Oh my goodness. So look at this. The, a, the, 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 the NFC North is the top four in point differentials. Vikings, Lions, Bears, Packers, 63, 60, 47, 41. That is crazy. That's insane. I didn't even realize that when I was looking at it. So right now, the NFC North is the toughest division in the NFL right now. And you look at some of these other wildcard teams, like I'm glad, like the Commanders are all the way down here at 33. 
that would tie us with the Chiefs in terms of point differential. So it looks like right now the NFC is really, really dominant so far this season in terms of like who, who's playing in a dominant way. Um, and then you have the Panthers at minus 100 for their point differential all the way at the bottom. So that's kind of funny. But some very, very interesting stuff. Um, you can see the Saints are still riding the high of being 2-0 two and, uh, two and oh with those blowout wins. They have a positive 20 point differential, but you know they, they are, they're falling fast, you can see there. So now we come to the power rankings. This is going to be very, very difficult because you can see how dominant some of these teams in the, in the NFC are. So let's think about this. Vikings are going to stay on top. I think that, you know, just because they had a bye doesn't mean that I don't think they belong on top, right? So I think they're going to stay on top. They're still number one. Um, number two, I'm going to go with the Detroit Lions. I'm going to put the Lions at number two just because of how strong they've looked on both offense and defense. But they haven't allowed 100 points yet. When you look at points allowed, um, they are second in points allowed in the NFC. Um, they're in the upper quartile in points four, but... They scored 50 points. They have no problem scoring points. So Lions are number two. Um, number three, I'm going to do the Chiefs. Still number one. Still reigning champs. Um, they're going to be number three. Five and zero oh still. Number four, I'm going to go with the Baltimore Ravens because again they dropped their first two, but they've looked really good in these first four games. And again, Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry looks like an unstoppable force, which is why, despite being only positive 28 in their point differential. Like, they're the number one scoring offense. They've scored 177 points. Um, so they are one of the top point scorers in the league. The only two teams that beat them are the Commanders and the Buccaneers with 178 points for both of them. But I think by the end of the year, the Ravens are going to have the top scoring offense. So they're number four. Now, who do they have at number five? It's hard to not put the Buffalo Bills high up because they have the highest point, differ point differential in the AFC. But then you got the Houston Texans, who are five and one. It's between the Texans and the Bills for me. I'm going to go with the Texans for number five, though. For five, at five and one, they are looking very strong. Their defense is a bit suspect, but they're a solid team. They're still five and one. They're winning the games that matter. I have them at, at number five. So the Commanders jump outside of the power rankings. They might be able to squeeze their way back in with a couple wins, but that has been my week seven prediction, guys. I'll see you next week. Hopefully the predictions this week go as well as they did last week and my positive ratio of points picked will continue. So I've been Lampini, and I'll see you guys next time.